Hey guys, how's it going? A friend of mine contacted me, he said his son has a big old air compressor that first he couldn't get running and uh, had a bunch of issues with it. And I told him I just didn't have the time to go look at it. He uses this for blowing out uh, irrigation systems. It's the season here. We're just going into November right now. And uh, you gotta get your uh, irrigation systems in your lawns blown out or else the pipes will freeze and crack. So uh, he got it to the point where it would run on his own, did some tune up parts and everything, got her fired up. But um, it does not, if you try to run air on it, as soon as it starts trying to build up air pressure, it just runs and stalls. So I figured I'll try to give it a shot. I make him no promises that we'll get it running, but uh, we will see what we can find on it. So it looks like it's running I don't know, a little Ford four-cylinder or Chevy four-cylinder engine in there. I'll get some lighting in a minute. And essentially it's a, a bunch, a big old um, air pump. I don't think it has much of an air tank. I think pretty much whatever the compressor makes, it probably has a small little expansion tank. Most of it just kind of goes right out the hose on there. So let's go grab some lights. Let's go fire it up, see what it does, and possibly be able to uh, come to some kind of conclusion what is going on with it. Yeah, unfortunately, this the top of this thing doesn't come off out here. We have a little side. Yeah, you can tell you redid the carb. You can see a bunch of newbies hanging off of it, and it looks like the intake is off. I suppose we got a choke lever there somewhere. Here's our control panel. All right, so we got a choke lever. <laughs> that's rudimentary. Oh, I think that's going to give us a crank. What do you think? So we got a decent choke. Let's see if we can close that. That's not um, closing very well. That's all she's got. Let me uh, pop you in a stand. I'll cut my hand over it, see if she'll go. Let's see if we can do something like this. Want to. Get rid of some of that choke, maybe it doesn't need it. We're off to a start, aren't we? That is loud. <laughs> I may try to, maybe we could take that cap off of there. Cause it's probably gonna even just take out the microphone on the camera. I may, maybe we could shove a muffler on there and or like an exhaust hose and try to muffle this thing a little bit. Give me a second. Let's take a walk down the aisle of junk. See if there's a muffler we can just shove on top of it to silence it a little bit. There might be one here. That's gonna be too small. We need like a car muffler. And motorcycle stuff. How about a chimney? And not, not finding much. Thought I had something leaning around. What's this right in front of me? <laughs> that one. Let me see if I can shove that on that top pipe. Actually, I'm not finding a 
motorcycle muffler. It looks closer to the pipe size. Come on. You're like almost there. <laughs> we go beat the end of that with a hammer. That should be able to get in there. There. <laughs> I think that makes a nice addition. <laughs> All right, let's open those air valves again because that's what chokes it. We sh I shut the air off and it just couldn't keep up. So let's go. She's a little fire up for us now. How much noise difference there is. <laughs> I think it's got a manifold leak too. Look at all the crap that blew out of the muffler. <laughs> I think somebody was living in there. It's still coming down. It's like raining. It's raining in here. It's showing. Anyway. Yeah, it sounds like it's got a exhaust leak somewhere in the manifold. So we're not gonna go screw with that. We're just gonna try to get her get it to run. Looks like it might have an intake leak too. That looks like fuel, wet fuel dripping down that's not gonna help things so my thought is it seems like the engine itself is running okay but let's go fire it up and let's give it another quick peek so I'm looking at the throttle what's controlling the throttle it looks like it's going to be this right here. Yeah. Let's go into the throttle linkage on the other side. Let's go fire it up and see what that does. So I don't know if it showed up or not. That did not adjust at all. So it's pretty much just staying at idle because that's the stop for it, that bolt. So that's idle speed and that should be full throttle. And that should be adjusting the throttle as the load changes on it. It does not seem like it's doing that. So what would control that? My guess is there's a diaphragm on the inside of that. And let's see what's attached to it. The only thing I see is this. I think I, th I see is this for the input, and that should be affecting that diaphragm, how much it moves. I would guess to see by how much pressure it has. Right? Wrong? That thing in the back is the air tank. That's that is the air tank. What it has for one, which isn't very big. It looks like maybe four gallons, five gallons. This is the compressor head down here. And so that should get a signal. Apparently air is going through it because air is coming out the other end. Is that the only, is that the only air that the compressor is making to feed that tank? The line, that line seems a little small, doesn't it? I need to stop pointing with the light. So that line, is that the feed or is, this, is that just like a feedback? Let's go take a peek on the other side. And we'll see what we got. Looking down there, what we got. Maybe that big fat line right there is the feed. That one down below. That is probably the feed. They look like they're all tied together though. Like this. The hose that's running up down to there. And where is that one coming from? Wherever that little canister is right there. Again, I have no idea. I'm, I'm just kind of, we're going through this together trying to figure it out. Let's go see. 
We can't see anything on this side, huh? Yeah, I see there's a switch down there. It's not hooked up. And this is only used, I think he uses it for like, he blows out like 12's ha blow. One more time. He blows out like 12 houses, something like that. And then the thing just gets put away and never gets used until the following year. And it's ancient, you know, it's got points and... Hmm. Let's go back to the other side. And my thought is this is not receiving a signal. All this is air, pneumatic. Not sending a signal to move the lever or this diaphragm is just gone. Let's open this up. That kind of looks like an adjustment, doesn't it? I'm not sure how that comes apart, but let's go throw some wrenches on that. See if we can go either take that off or remove it. If that bell comes off the top of it and we'll see what's inside it. So it looks like it's got flats on it. Like it's meant to put a wrench on it. See if we can get, see if that'll unturn for us. I have to move you, or else you can even get punched in the head. There it goes. I guess it's probably like a diaphragm and a spring that's in there. It has like weird tension on it, like it's spring loaded. <laughs> out of it. So I feel like it's yeah, it's gonna pop on us. There it goes. Let's see what we got. We got a diaphragm of some sort. Let's um take a peek. dirty so how would that work air pressure would go on one side of it and my guess is there's like a, a needle it's probably like a needle that pushes down in the center of that which allows air to come through here and as the pressure changes it adjusts to it is that the needle is that center move up and down yeah That's just a washer. Or, you know what, I wonder if it, do you think it closes off the air passage down below? Maybe that's what it is. Let's go over to the bench. We'll take a look at this. This thing feels like a petrified rock. Maybe it's just that this diaphragm is so <laughs> frozen that it won't move. I was thinking about trying to pick that out of there, but I have a feeling like the threads are holding it, right? Yeah. I see some cracking in it too. I wonder if that, it's just that diaphragm so shot. Let's go see if we can get the uh, set screw out of it. Maybe we can kind of push, push that diaphragm out. It doesn't come out all the way. Yeah, that sucks. Let's go pop it in a vise. See if we can go grab the, the center of that with a pair of vise grips. See if we can work this out of here. I see, definitely see cracking going around it. I wonder if it's not holding there and the air's going right through it. It does seem to move. Yeah. You think wire cutters? Get on it a little bit. There you go. Yeah. I don't know what. It's like a brass ring. Don't know what all this is. You think that's just crud? You think that was something at one, something at one time? Might be, maybe it was a gasket. So we had that, that, and then that little plate down there is what was getting pushed against from that set screw. So it was like that, and it's getting pushed on, making the diaphragm push more 
on the uh, valve that opened up to go down below. Kind of wonder if maybe we just kind of crank down that screw a little bit if we can get more out of it. But there's not much. I have no idea what this valve is too. So to try to find parts for something that's, yeah, this thing looks like it's from the 60s. So, yeah. See if we can work that off of there. We'll clean it up and we'll try to, yeah, I think that was a gasket that was underneath it and it's just gone. Yeah, it's not doing anything now anyway, so. Uh, let's go clean this up on a wire wheel. Yeah, I bet you that was a gasket that sat out here on this edge where the brass was and it kind of worked its way into the center. I'm going to go clean some of this stuff up a little bit and maybe we'll put it back together and we will try cranking down on it a little bit more. I don't think that would have impeded its movement, right? Make sure I put things back together the way I had it. Well, that's the side of where we're looking at. It was like that. And we're looking at it like that, right? And the screw pushed on the center of that. There you go. Like that. That's how it was. Yeah, I bet you that just doesn't have enough flex to it anymore. Anyway, let's go clean it up, see what we get. I cleaned up in a wire wheel and I noticed there's a breather hole for the top side. I don't think that would make much of a difference. It's not going to hold back that kind of pressure, you know, but plus you think it. Yeah. All right, so it was that, the spring. The diaphragm. I wonder if we should. Do you think this was a gasket that went around the outside edge? And if so, maybe we can take like a rubber O ring or something. Maybe we'll drop. I don't know, it's brass on brass. Would it matter on that side of it? Because all the air is on this side of it, right? There's, the air pressure is here, it's not on the other side. Would a gasket make a difference? If the gasket fell out of it, would it make a difference? Would it move the diaphragm into a different location? Yeah, it's just in Google. Let me see if I have something that'll fit. If not, we'll just put it back the other way it was. Eh, not sure if I have anything large enough. I kind of want something fairly thin too. Right the first time? All right, we'll go with that. Like that. That will get bolted in there. And then, of course, we would adjust. Let's leave it all the way out because I don't know which way it works. Is it, is it, you know, are we influencing it more by running it in or not? So let's leave that backed off and see what happens. That's our adjustment where it was before with the, the jam that was. Yeah, so if I had to guess, I would say air comes in through that port. It has to drop down through there, but yeah, if we leave that far enough away, like, so what would, how would it adjust though? Yeah, it's all going to fall apart on us. Me, yeah, I'm going to take an air gun and blow some of that crap out of there first, and then we'll put that on there. Let's take that out of there before it goes flying. That's all one assembly, or if um, yeah, there's a part number in here. I'll try to find a new gasket for it. I think we're getting ahead of herself, though. You get the end. I'm gonna go tighten that up and we'll give her a shot. I actually went down, I read it down a little bit just so it's kind of touching the diaphragm, see if we get any kind of thing out of it. So we're gonna look and see if that arm decides to move at all. If it starts to run away, I'm just gonna shut it down.
air's already shut off, too. Well, there you go <laughs> yeah the diaphragm was just not moving it doesn't seem like that was adjusted or anything because it was all pretty crudded up it wasn't like somebody had that apart i don't know if that o-ring kind of just fell into the inside of it maybe it limited the throw of that diaphragm and like i said where it fell out of where it was i wonder if um it threw the adjustment off because the uh, diaphragm was sitting taller up without the uh, the gasket above it just over time, it took itself out. It seems like it's doing everything it should. I'm gonna go over real quick just what happened so it's on a clear side. Okay, just so you understand what is working. So this is like a quick dump to the outside. If it had another airline, it would. This one is going to an airline that's curled up in that cabinet over there. And then the end of that is open. I believe it's open. Go find out. Yeah, the valve is open. So the air hose is all hooked up and it, the air was just blowing out of this end. It wasn't sealed off. So what it was doing is that the carburetor was constantly pretty much at idle, just a little up off of idle. And it was not adjusting for whatever the load was. Kind of thinking like your cruise control in your car. You go up a hill, it gives it more gas. You go down a hill, it kind of backs off. Well, the air compressor, when the air is zero, when the pressure is low, there's not much resistance to go do it. But as soon as it starts getting up to like 100, what's it say, 150 PSI, it was up there around. Once it got to around 150 PSI, it needed to give the engine more throttle to make up for that. Instead, it was just staying at an idle and it was not enough fuel just to keep it up to RPM to the point where it would just stall right out when you keep going. So that's what it was. It was just that diaphragm. Well, this one's going to be short and sweet. <laughs> I thought we were going to kind of get into it a little more than that. I'm not quite sure uh, I explained everything correctly as it went along, but I'm thinking, uh, I think I got it. So... Uh, with that, guys, <laughs> we're going to sign off. We're going to go uh, work on something else. But I want to thank you for hanging out and uh, a little bit of wrenching with me. And uh, I'll see you next time. Till then, later. Don't forget to take my, uh, my chimney off of there. <laughs>
Thank you.